Okay, again, good morning. Uh, my name is Firash Shari. Um, I'm the uh, community support engineer. Suppose that I have this one, sorry. The, uh, uh, this is not mine. Timo, I think you left this. Now, you, you, after my presentation, leave it for now. <laughs> All right, let me see if mine work. Oh, uh, it does work. Okay, uh, third time, let's try it. Uh, good morning, uh, my name is Firas Shari. Um, today we're gonna be talking about DHCP option 82 and the endless possibilities, um, acting as the Open Wi-Fi community support engineer, so the deployment and the examples we're gonna see will be um, you know, um, covered under Open Wi-Fi. Uh, so, DCP handshake. I'm not gonna waste a lot of time in this. I know most of people, all people in this room probably know it better than I do. Um, but it starts with a discover packet, you know, to the server. Server replies back with an offer. Um, client comes back with a request for that IP address. Server acknowledged it. You know, your client get an IP address. Everyone's happy. Now users can access the internet. No one is calling you and, you know, complaining about how the Wi-Fi sucks. It doesn't work. Um, right. So, but what's wrong with the previous handshake? So the problem is clients do not have a predefined IP address when it's come to DHCV, right? So how they can send the Discover packet, it has to be as a broadcast. So if you can see here, like I highlighted the IP address, which is the 255 IP address uh, for the broadcast, right? Um, so... We know well. We know that like broadcast doesn't work well with uh, with wireless and Wi-Fi, of course. And we also know that the DCB server will never be 99% is never going to be on the wireless side. So how can you fix this? We introduced something called the DCP relay agent. Basically, it's a service that runs on the AP. What it does is intercepts the packet. Trans reconstruct it and from a broadcast to unicast. So we see the packet here as a broadcast and then after the AP going to the server, it's gonna become a unicast. Okay, so this is all good, but you know, the title had option 82 on it. So what does that, what does that fit in? Basically option 82 is what we call the DHCP relay agent information. It allows the agent, uh, the DHCP agent to insert this information in the packet. So what it does is like it, you know, intercept the packet, insert some information in it, and then send it to the DHCP server. There are two sub options. We have the circuit ID and the agent ID. Uh, those two sub options, the information under them can be used to filter um, you know, all classify clients, depends on the way you want to look at it. Uh, in open Wi-Fi, we allow two, three, well, three pieces of type of information to be sent under either one of those. We can either send the SSID name, we can send the VLAN ID, or we can send the AP1 MAC address. Um, if the server can use those information to kind of like um, target uh, IP assignment, uh, either for, you know, we can, for example, um, assign IP address for multiple uh, VLANs under the same SSID or the other way around, or we can even like, you know, go uh, as granular as basically assigning IP addresses bare uh, AP MAC address. Okay, so let's look at, uh, I don't have anything behind me. Uh, <laughs> let's look at a, a couple of deployment scenarios. Um, it should be here. So the first one is the, uh, the, uh, the DCB server gonna be actually on the same uh, VLAN subnet, the management subnet for the APs. This is actually my home network. You see this is the Linux uh, um, um, uh, router, like um, just a new uh, PC that it's running upon to. And then we have the open Wi-Fi AP. We have two SSIDs. Uh, the first First one for VLAN 1000 called WAN 1000. I know original name, so uh, sorry. Um, and then you have a trunk between them. You have an IC GCB server running on the uh, router. Um, we have a public IP address to net uh, all the clients. So the goal here is trying to get our client to get an IP address in the WAN 1000 uh, SSID. Um, now I'm gonna, we're gonna look at the configuration for both sides, the AP and the, um, the server. So in open Wi-Fi, we use something called your central protocol. That protocol is used to configure the AP for configuration and management. Uh, we push the configuration down as a, as, a, as a JSON file format. I didn't collapse all the information here, but I collapsed enough to see the part that we're interested in. You can see here there is an upstream um, 
uh, interface, again, very original, like WAN 1000. We're running DCP service uh, relay on it. Uh, there is the SSID name, which is WAN 1000, and the VLAN ID 1000. I also highlighted the definition of the, uh, the DCP service itself, uh, you know, the relay service. Uh, so you can see the circuit ID here. We're sending the SSID under the sub-option one. You can see that the relay option is the, the sorry, the relay server is the uh, net server, which is the 10 to 0 .0 .0 1, and you see the VLAN ID, which is 1000. Now we're gonna look at the um, IC uh, server configuration. Basically, here you can see we have two classes. We identified two classes. The first one is for VLAN 1000. The next one the, for VLAN 2000. We're using the match F uh, statement and the filtering substring. Basically, the substring function look um, on a byte level, um, um, uh, filters on a byte level. So you see here we're, fi we're filtering on the uh, circuit ID um, uh, option. We have zero is for offset. So we're starting for the first byte. And then you go seven bytes, and that should cover the information we're sending here, which is the WAN, um, uh, which is the WAN 1000 or the SSID name. Same thing for like the V1000. Then we have the shared network. That means that all subnet pools under the, the um, um, uh, uh, they are under the same physical interface. And then finally, we have the deny and allow uh, statesman to actually, uh, you know, define which one or like, you know, select which one of those pools going to set then a service, uh, e which one of the SSIDs and VLANs we have. Okay, so now like, let's look at the whole transaction. We'll look at the DCP discover, um, uh, the handshake. We'll start with the discover. This is um, 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 a Wireshark. You can see here I highlighted the agent ID on the left side. Uh, on the right side, if you look at the bytes that I highlighted, there's the first byte is 01, which is the, the sub, actually the sub-option one, then 07, that's the length of the information included in that, and then the last seven bytes are the actual information. Uh, you can see that the source IP address is the AP itself, it's not the client, so it is coming from the relay agent, it's not coming from the um, um, uh, the client, uh, and then you can see the, um, the other information here um, uh, regarding the DCP transaction. So we'll look at the next packet, which is the offer coming back from the um, um, the um, uh, the server. So now we now we can see here now the server has replied back, which uh, with the IP address uh, suggested to the client. You can see I highlighted here that uh, it's you know it's suggesting that the client will get dot twenty uh, in that subnet. Uh, on the right side, I also highlighted the second sub option, which is the AP MAC. You can see it start with I think D four if I can see that. I need, I need a new glasses. So, um, but it, you can see that that's the MAC address actually for the AB, for the WAN uh, interface. Uh, and then uh, the third will be the request. Now it's coming back from the, uh, of course, for the, from the AP on behalf of the client. And that's going to be, um, you know, targeted to the server. And then the last one will be the... Um, the acknowledgement. Now the um, the you know the server gonna acknowledge that, and then the client will get an IP address, and everyone will be happy. Okay, so second scenario. In this scenario, we're gonna move the um, the server like outside outside of the the uh, the, uh, the same subnet. So we have it on an EC2 instance. We have the um, everything gonna stay the same except that there is no route between them now. So we need to figure out that that uh, that that uh, part of the configuration. So in in the AP side, everything gonna stay the same except the relay server gonna be the public IP address of the EC2 instance. As for the um, um, EC2 instance, also the same except we have to identify the internal uh, IP addresses for the subnet IP addresses for the EC2 for this to work. Uh, and then now we're going to look at the uh, transaction like the uh, back. You look in the TCP dump of the uh, backets uh, on each interface of the, those clients. So we start with the AP. Um, the first thing, first packet is the originating from the AP. The source is the IP address of the AP and the destination is the, um, uh, the EC2 instance. Uh, it goes through NANing and now the source IP address has changed. This is the, the public IP address of the NAT router. And then go through Comcast network arrives here. Keep an eye on the gateway IP address. That's, that's an important piece of information. The EC2 now is going to process that and it's going to give us um, um, an offer back. Um, the offer is going to be constructed in this way. 
and the problem is it's trying to actually send it to the AP, which is the relay agent. So that's an internal IP address. That bucket, we're not gonna go anywhere, so it's dropped. Uh, so what happens is here we need to introduce uh, an IP table rule um, at the output chain to actually you know, direct anything that goes to port 67 to the public IP of the NAT, uh, NAT router, which is 70, 73, uh, and we you know, construct the bucket again, it goes through Comcast network, and it's dropped again. The reason it's dropped here, because Comcast, for security reasons, um, you know, disable any uh, downstream traffic on port 67. So what we need to do is, and we need to modify our IB table um, uh, to change the destination uh, port from, I chose, 40,000, just a random port. Uh, and this is what our uh, packet will look like. And then it goes through Comcast network, no problem, arrives at our LAN um, in, uh, NAT router. Uh, remember, problem, we don't have any service running on port 40,000, so we need to do, I would say, down port. I don't know if that's a word, but we're gonna do denetting again from like 40,000 to, 60, uh, to 67, targeted to the, uh, to the AP. And this is how the packet will look like after it arrives at the AP. From the AP perspective, everything looks the same, um, and we're, we're good. Uh, so the AP is going to forward that to the client, and now we're going to look at the last two packets, the DCP request, which is basically going to go, I'm, I'm done. Uh, Okay, uh, like I'm, I'm gonna go through that because like it basically goes through the same offer uh, route um, as for the um, uh, for the acknowledgement. It will has to go through the same um, uh, route as the as the offer. So the two IB table rules that you know applies here are gonna be uh, in use. I'm sorry, I'm flying through this, uh, so uh, because I'm out of time and. Uh, this is what I imagine you guys looks like right now after hearing DCP so many times. <laughs> So uh, thank you very much. I hope this was informative. Thank you. Thank you.